In Acts 1 chapter, after they prayed in the And it says, remember, it's these words say to you, there was not, not one. Everybody say, there's not one. Not one. That lack. Come on. Amen. That, that lack. So I want you to know that there was so much love. Ben, uh, Sister Leah and her ministry is the city of love. There was so much love in the early church. They loved each other and loved God. There was a spirit yes. giving, a spirit of giving. They did what Jesus said. Yes. That do you know that there was not one person, one person sleeping in the tent yes. in the church? Do you know that there was not one person in the food line who said, Well, how do you know that? Amen. Because how many believe the Bible? Would God lie to us? That's no. It. Would God lie to us? No. The Bible says in Acts 4 that there was not <coughs> one that lacked among them. That's right. Thanks. Nobody was homeless. Nobody was hungry. Nothing like in fact there was so much provision that people sold their houses. Now, how do you have no lack and sell a house, too? That means you had extra houses. Hey. They had houses that they could sell and give to the kingdom of God. They'd come and lay that money down at the apostles' feet. Amen. And it was distributed. Everybody was provided for. Yes. Now, have you ever heard of a church here in America or today where there was no lack yet? That's where God wants us to be. Yes. Thy kingdom come. Is there any lack in heaven? No. no. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. And God. Praise mm -hmm. God. So we're going to receive uh, offering. So I want you to stand with me, though, quickly. Pastor Brian, come on up. And, uh, and uh, Pastor Barry is going to be sharing your name. So, uh, Pastor uh, Brian, would you, would you pray over the, the offering of this way the Lord has laid you? So I want everybody just to lift your hands to the Lord. So when you give your offering, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's an act of worship. You're not giving, yes. giving money, you're giving worship. Yes. I, I give myself away so you can use me. Sing. I give myself away.
hotel room. They found a baby so recently. A baby that had been the mother had overdosed on dope on the van hotel room. She was dead four days. The baby was in there with her stinking body in a diaper, diaper rag. A baby in Portland. We got, they need what we have. They found her, her body dead. She overdosed with a needle in her arm while her baby was in the room. Don't change the song, the noise was falling. Yeah, I'll give myself away, don't. Brother, brother, go back and get that way, don't change, don't, don't interrupt the noise. But uh, the police, they smelled the, the body of the mother. They went to the room and found that baby. People have been dying for what you and I have. We've got to take it up. This is why we do. Maybe that lady passed by the tip of my body. I don't know. Maybe she's. But we have a job to do. Right now, every moment, people are lifting their eyes up in hell. A burning hell. They'll never have another altar call. They'll never have another service. They'll never have another sermon. The Bible says there's no doors in those, there's no windows in hell. No water in hell. People are dying. But you and I have that. So that's why we gotta do what we have to do. I don't know if anybody watched the news today. Mayor Wheeler declared a state of emergency of gun violence. People are dying. We have over 40 homicides. Mayor's office sent me an email. Want me to serve on that committee. They, they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. But we have the answer. And we're going to keep preaching the gospel. We're going to keep laying hands on the sick. We're going to keep casting out devils. Hallelujah. Keep preaching, people. We got it. It's about souls. Everybody say it's all about souls. It's all about souls. It's about eternity. It's about eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Real quickly, Angela, when you stand up?
side, put me in, in boiling hot water, and praise the Lord. If it wasn't for God, there's no way I could have stand in that boiling hot water. And He's done so much for me, and I just, I just, I just want to give God praise for everything He's done for me. He's delivering me from evil spirits. Yeah. And just. It's a, it's a long road with Jesus, but I, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm Hallelujah. starting to feel the presence. So thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, God. That's great for the time, Mr. That's great. Come on up. And we just appreciate you. Thank you. And uh, I don't want to take up much time because he's But I just want to share one scripture. And I don't have a microphone for you right here. I don't have a phone. And I just want to just share this. And we'll teach more about this later. We praise God for what he did in Angela, but I want to sh share this. When we start off in, in deliverance, we used to pray for people just one time and say, okay, you're all delivered now. Praise God. Just keep your deliverance. You're set free. And how many know that that is true, that scripturally, that God calls things that be not as though they were? Do you know you were set free 2,000 years ago at the, on the cross? Amen. All of us have been set free. But I often heard that deliverance is like this. You know, uh, Pastor Barry, you're, you're a land, landlord. When you have been given ownership of, of, of the house by law, you're legally the owner. But demons are trespassers. They get in the mind through abuse, addiction, sin. They, get in the, they affect our, our, our body. And the battle begins in our mind and war. And so God sends us. The, the sheriff sends his deputies out to evict, to evict the trespassers. Amen. So depression, anxiety, addiction, uh, lust—all these demons are trespassers. They do not have a right to the body of Christ, but they're trespassers. But God has deputized; He's anointed you and appointed you, and He says, "In my name, believers, in my name shall cast out devils." Amen. And so we used to pray for people. You know, there's a number, a number of stories. But then we found that after we uh, we cast out devils out of some people, that we found them praying for them again. And then also, um, and this we, we had a lady that, for instance, that had multiple personalities. And we ended up, but we found out that God led us into continual deliverance. And that's a whole other another subject. That it's not enough just to cast devils out of a person one time. That's right. Many times uh, we have layers yeah. that have been because we've been through. And it's not that God can't deliver you at one time. It's the fact that God's inter interested in relationship. And so God oftentimes, deliverance happens in a process where a person may take came multiple deliverances, but uh, in order that he may walk with you that, that relationship and teach you how to war and how to battle and how to, how to keep, all right? So I'm going to give you two scriptures and shut up. All right, uh, all right, two scriptures. <laughs> I'm going to give you um, two passages. Yeah, somebody read real quick. Uh, Exodus 23, 29. And I'll just quote them just for time's sake. Exodus 23, 29. You just, uh, you just follow along make sure that Pastor Corey's not saying something that's not in there, okay? All right. To, now you tell me if it is. Exodus 29, 23, 23rd chapter, the 29th to the 31st verse. It says, God says, I will send my hornet out to drive out the Hittites, the, the Perzites, the enemies, these are physical enemies to us, spiritual enemies. He said, I'm going to drive them out. But he says, I'm not going to drive them out in one year. Now, can God do that? Can he drive the enemy out in one instant? But he says, I'm not going to do it. Some deliverances, remember that some deliverances will happen instant. And God says, little by little, I will drive them out, lest the beast fulfill multiply <coughs> I'm not, in other words, summarizing, he's not going to give you more deliverance than you can keep. So there are areas that God has, He takes you through stages because He wants you to, to grow in the walk with Him. And then real quickly go to Judges, the third chapter, in the first and second verse where God says, These are the nations that the Lord let remain in, in uh, Israel that they may learn to war. And so God drove out some enemies quickly, and I'm just kind of rushing because of, of time. But look at it, it's Judges 3. God, He doesn't change, it's the same today, yesterday, and forever. He gave them some deliverance. There were times that God sent his angels and, him, and Israel was instantly delivered. But there were times that God left some of the enemy remain that this generation, that they would learn to war. See, God is not, if you have children, how many have children, if you give them everything instantly at one time, you know, what kind of child are you going to have? 
But God, wants, he wants you to learn to read your Bible every day, to quote the scripture, to get filled with the word of God, to get filled with the Holy Spirit. He wants you to learn to use the name of Jesus, use his promises, and that takes time. And so some, Jesus himself said, some spirits will only come up by prayer and fasting. That's not instant. That's not instant. Sometimes you're going to have to get your Bible, and you're going to have to fast, and you're going to have to battle. You're going to have to speak the word before God breaks that thing through. Amen? So just a just short, continual deliverance. Pastor Barry? So I just say this. So we used to say people, claim the deliverance that you have received, but um, allow the Holy Spirit um, to uh, to do surgery for what you need. Amen? In Psalms 91, it says, All who set their love upon the Lord, that God will deliver them. Amen. And so in worship, and setting your love upon Jesus, you get free. All right. But you know, it's really true what you were saying about uh, deliverance, because we've... Uh, done a lot of uh, prayer and uh, you got a lot of manifestations and things coming out of people and then uh, you think you're done and then you let the person go but there's a strong man that's hiding Okay. and and uh, sometimes it, you know the spirits will play possum yes. where they'll act like they're not there because they want to stay in the host because it's like a parasite yes. the bible says that when you drive out a demon it goes through dry places yes. if you've ever been to Arizona uh -huh. With no air conditioner, that's a dry place. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, and so sometimes when you're praying for somebody for deliverance, even if you can't stay with them all night, let's say a few hours or whatnot, if you don't have a peace in your heart, even if there's no manifestations, and they don't have a peace, bring them back and, and keep praying for them until they're free. Amen. I learned, Amen. Um, just experienced it to where let people go and didn't really feel quite there. But then um, I bring them back, and we pray for them, and there was crazier stuff that came out than anything. And it was like all the little devils were coming out, but the strong man that had welcomed them all in there was, was hiding at the bottom. No. And so, um, all right. and you know, all those other things were gone, but the strong man was there. And then, um, and they could have gone free just by obeying God, coming to, to church, and loving Jesus. They could have right. got free. They don't need right. You, listen, if you're out there and you're going through things, you don't need a man to lay hands on you. Right. All you need is faith in God. All right. All you need to do is say, Satan, I rebuke you, I resist you, and he's got to go. All but right. you first got to surrender your life to God. That's yes. what Tom was talking there about. Yes, it is. Leo was talking about. Yes. Yes. Don't play games. There it is. The first part of spiritual authority is submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. Yes. You can't have any kind of spiritual authority if you're doing your own thing. If you're hey, on your own. Man. You, you, you get laughed at by the enemy. He'll That's eat your it. lunch. That's it. But if you really submit to God, if you surrender to God, and then you rebuke the devil, you don't need a pastor to lay hands on it, it can be good. When I got set free of devils, I didn't even know I, ha I had them. I always cry out to God out of my heart in the, in the, um, in the wheat field. I grew up in the country. And um, God came and revealed himself to me. And enemies come out of me, too, uh, very negative spirits. I felt all this weight come off. I felt the Lord. Amen. I began to Amen. I got delivered. It wasn't in church. It wasn't a delivered service. It was me crying out to God. That's yes. right. I got yes. and, and I'm for deliverance, believe me. I'm yes. for laying hands right. on people. I'm just saying, you don't need to go to a deliverance ministry. You are a deliverance ministry. Yes. Yes. You call out the name of Jesus. Yes. Every Ooh. demon trembles in the sound of his name. Yes. Yes. But yes. when you're doing deliverance, if you pray for somebody and they say, man, I'm, I'm, I still I have peace, or you don't have peace, bring them back and pray and pound until they get free. And so, you know, sometimes that, that's just something I've learned, you know. Um, it's, uh, but, you, but, you know, it, he's, what Pastor Corey's saying is true. There's things God set me free of just instantly. Then there's things, man, that I've had to get the Word of God for. Yeah. And fight and fight and not have any easiness and fight and fight and speak the Word and walk the floor. Yeah. When I didn't see any change, I had to walk the floor and say, I'm not moved by what I see here, Phil. I'm only moved by the Word of God. That's what I stand on. Yeah. I don't stand on, on because the devil always will ask you questions. Did God say? Yeah. What about your past? Yeah. Well, all of your family died of cancer. Why shouldn't you die too? Yeah. All right, right, all right. I mean, the all devil right. bring. You know, the devil doesn't change. He, he, 
He's the same liar he's always been. No. He's always been. No. He's the same same old liar. Right. So the devil is very good at putting foul questions in your mind yeah. to get you to question God or to think. And you think it's your thought, but it's really the enemy putting That's it in right. your mind. Sometimes your mind will drift off in left field. Don't let it do that. You know, wasn't it cool? And Luke is like, get your mind right, boy. Yeah. Well, maybe you guys don't watch those kind of movies. Yeah. Yeah. Ministry. You don't want to some time. I watch all the prison movies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get your mind right. Yeah. What we have here is a failure to communicate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but uh, what we're looking at with uh, with Jesus is is a mighty, uh, my, mighty God. And, and uh, when I when I got born again. I had the privilege of, of traveling with a man by the name of Larry Reed. I was young, I was 18 years old. We did a lot of street preaching. And he was um, really uh, getting getting me, uh, man, just in uh, just in praying in the spirit, praying in tongues, praying in the spirit a lot. And we get in there and we pray and we pray and we see things happen. And then um, Dave Roberson passed away, but he was out of Klamath Falls, Oregon. And, he had a, a ministry for a while and started 30 churches in Oregon and then moved down to Tulsa. And uh, did, did, I mean, he, at, at wow. the height of it, he, was, wow. he, he wore out, you know, two twin-engine airplanes and was winning 5,000 people to Jesus a month and just tearing it up, you know. But he, he locked himself up in a prayer closet. He was working at the mill, and uh, one day he had a dream um, about um, a, a woman of God doing a miracle service and she was on a platform and, and um, she's pulling people out of a wheelchair, blind eyes, deaf ears, they're coming out and uh, she looks out at the crowd and says, I don't know why I'm doing this. One of you men must have failed. And wow. she looks right at Dave. Wow. And so he quit his job at the mill. Wow. He was had a call of God eating that hole on the inside of him so heavy. And so he quit his job and he started praying. He heard the mill whistle, uh, the mill whistle blow in the morning at eight. And at night, when it blew, he'd get out of prayer at lunch. When it blew, he'd take lunch, go right back to his prayer closet. He did that for like a month. Two months went by. Three months, his cupboards were empty. And the only reason the store extended the credit, you know, there was because they thought he was still working at the mill. He didn't tell them. Yeah. He quit. You know, three kids. The call of God burning a hole on him, so hungry on the inside, didn't know what to do with it. And he says, well, I didn't know what to do, so I locked myself up and I prayed eight hours a day in other tongues. <coughs> didn't get any visitations from angels, didn't have any kind of, all I got, my mouth got real dry. <laughs> I, got, I got really bored. But he unlocked a mystery, the mm -hmm. revelation gift. Mm -hmm. And uh, this person invited him to this uh, meeting to go listen to this guy. He's like, well, any chance to get out of the closet? I'm like, take it, you know. <laughs> so he goes down there, and there's this real boring guy talking, and, you know, really, you know, one of those uh, turned around collar people, or, or, it, or the, you know, <laughs> God, who made the awesome existence that you know, you know, <laughs> one of these. And, he got so bored, he was like looking at the rings of his coffee. It was, you know, what no. it's about the... And he looks and he sees this lady to his left and he sees a vision of her hip deterioration and all of everything that's going on. And he says, man, is your hip deteriorated? Do you have arthritis? She goes, that's what the doctor tells me. He goes, praise God, I saw it. And he goes, can I pray for you? And she's like, sure. And she thought, you know, sometimes in the course of the day that he'll remember her in prayer. That's not what prayer meant to a crazy, you know. Radical young man. Yeah, yeah. He got right down in front of her and prayed for her. Her one leg grew out three or four inches. She was healed. Wow. And she went oh, running around. And, well, they didn't believe in that kind of stuff. And so the guy was like, hey, this doesn't happen. And she goes, that's not true, Sonny. I've been arthritis. I've got no pain. And she was hit, like hitting the other people. Yeah. Like, you know, just healed. They did. And they said, well, can you come back and pray for some people down underneath the, the church? And the Lord said, no. In the main service or nothing. So he's like, in the main service or nothing, you know. So it wasn't a church that really accepted or received the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Anyways, miracles break loose. And a bunch of kids that came down. He says, well, if you want what I got, you know, come down here now. And they all got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And, you know, it, it birthed the ministry. But when we started in his care, the Lord gave me a scripture out of Romans 8.13. And we've done a lot of street ministry, a lot of prison ministry, and I see, 
you know, that's interesting. What Pastor Corey was talking about tonight is, is true, is that um, I don't believe once saved, always saved. I believe that nothing can pull you out of God's hand because it says you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. But I believe that you can walk out of God's hand into destruction. Oh, that's right. You can't be pulled out. You can't be stolen out. Yep, that's it says that's that right. God's love is greater than any demon. Right. It's, you know, life or death can't stop God's that's love. It's greater that's than it. any principality right. or power. Right. Yeah. It's power. It's real. Yeah. It's alive. That's it's a greater that's force it. than that's anything good. in this world. Yes. But but you can walk away. That's, that's it. Correct. That's right. right. That's you can good. walk out. Yep. Amen. Because of what Peter said. But anyways, you know, uh, we see these guys come in and they know about all the, the 12 steps and all this. And when we were out there on the streets, you know, Larry Reed, he was a 16-year heroin addict, spent seven years in San Quentin prison. Wow. And the judge said, there's only three places a man like you can go, Larry. The morgue, the insane asylum, or San Quentin. Try seven years. And wow. he was walking one day in prison, and he seen these guys, you know, jamming the locks and then throwing a, a bottle of alcohol lit on fire and seeing men burned alive. And the images some of these guys get in prison and some of the things that they see. Wow. Only the love and power of God can right. undo that and clean right. it out. And some That's of the right. abuse some of these guys go through. Right. Only God's love and power can deliver and heal and wash away the past. And at any rate, he was walking one day and he says, you know, heard God's voice say, I didn't create you to be in a place like this. Well, he didn't grow up in a Christian home, but he didn't grow up in a bad home, got caught up in drugs. But when, when he got out, Nikki Cruz and Sonny Argonzoni oh, wow. were there down, down there with their men's home. And he got hit with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and at, at 80 some years old, we were still on the streets preaching. What? Still as radical as the day he got saved oh, with the whole You know, we go, we go everywhere. But I would see these guys come in and out of, of prison. And I would see these guys come in and out of um, uh, off the streets. And some of them make it. Some of them wouldn't make it. And then some of them would be in and out, in and out, in, in one day, out the next. And then you'd either see him make it or not. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, you know, there's got to be a sheer clad way that we can show people just because they want to walk out of everything that they were and everything that you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, it's one of these things where people come in and they come in and scared and they're like, oh, Pastor Mary, I want to get free from, from dope. And the Holy Spirit tells me, no, they actually don't want to get free. They love dope more than me. Mm. You know, okay. and so I said, "Well, you actually you love dope more than God, but you want to want to get free because you've lost everything. Mm -hmm. You loved your family. You didn't love it as much as dope. You loved dope more, but you didn't love your family. You lost them to addiction, mm -hmm. and it hurts you, and it pains you, and the shame and and the uh, failure. But if I can show you a way where you could." turn your not want to into want to when you do it. And they say, yeah. I take him to Romans 8, and he says, you know, hey, you want to be free from indwelling sin. Mm -hmm. You want to walk this thing out. What I've found is that prayer is either going to choke sin out or sin's going to choke prayer out. But you're not going to find somebody like Sister Leah was talking about that's fervent in prayer that's going to be out there in a heavy sin because you can't be in genuine worship. You can't be in, in genuine prayer and stay the same way. When you see him, you will be like him. Yes. And you see him in worship. You see him yes. in prayer. You see him in the word. Yes. That's and good. if you're reading the Bible just to get more head knowledge and beat people up, you've missed no. it. No. no. If you're not it's reading done. the Bible to get to know Jesus deeper, oh. then you're on the wrong path. Yeah. One right. time this guy came out off the streets and he, he memorized all these healing scriptures. I was like, well, why don't you go ahead and now lay hands on the sick? Yeah. He's like, what? I'm like, what do you think they're there for? Ah, it's right. just for your memorization. You're trying yeah. to impress me. Guys. I don't even know as many scriptures. As I'm Come on now. Uh, Come on now. I'm not even impressed. Come on now. But now lay hands on them. And you know people start getting healed left and right. Yeah. You know, any part of the word that you embrace, you're going to walk in. Exactly. Any part of the word that you, you know, don't walk in or you don't, you know, receive, you're not going to walk in the benefit of it. That's right. That's right. The Bible says my people are destroyed because they're lacking knowledge. And so I found out the Holy Spirit is a mighty, mighty teacher and power, a mighty leader. Um, a mighty changer of the soul realm. In other words, 
The Proverbs says that the spirit of man is a candle of the Lord. Yes. And he's searching out the deep, dark places. Well, let me tell you, my friend, you don't take a candle into a lighted place. You take a candle in a dark place. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. yes. And so these, these people come in and they, they want to change. They want to they want to want to change, but they don't really want to change because they love dope, they love whatever more than God, but they want yes. to want to. Yeah. So you say, hey, hey meet, meet me, meet me for prayer. You know, <coughs> let's start praying in the spirit. And this is why it is care was really started, is that the people that get born again, they can be discipled to where when I visit them 20 years from now, they're more on fire for God than they were the day we started. Amen. Amen. Because yeah. when you have a relationship with Jesus, you don't burn out, you burn in. Religion will burn you out. Right. That's right. Every time. When you love Jesus, man, you get hotter and hotter. That's and, hotter. Right. Oh. and the Bible says the lamp of the righteous grows brighter and brighter. Yes. Yes. That's why it's such a blessing to have older saints in here tonight, Sister Lee and Brother Moreland and, 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 and all, these <laughs> guys, all these guys, all you know, they're, they're people you can learn from. Yes. They're people that have been through some things. Yes. A little gray hair goes a long ways. You know yes. what I mean? Amen. And uh, knowing Jesus. Amen. It Amen. can also be you can get older and remain the same if you don't learn. Yes. That's right. Right. All right. I'm trying to I'll do that. I'll but, it. No. But, um, but here he says, here in Romans 8, 13, he says, uh, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the peace of the body, you will live. Okay. And so, you know, yeah, when we come in... And we give ourselves to the Lord. Don't resist Him. Don't 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 get weird people teaching you with fairy tales and fables. Oh, that's right. right. Don't listen to these people that'll turn you away from the Holy Ghost. That's a straight up satanic spirit, an yeah. Antichrist spirit. Let me tell you something. You can't separate Jesus and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that's right. You couldn't even come to Jesus unless the Spirit of God drew you. Oh, All right. That's All right. right. And it says right. the Spirit of God. Well, what? Bring back your remembrance the words that Jesus said. Amen. Amen. So stop that. Yeah. Stop that perverted doctrine. Paul yeah. says, don't forbid anybody from praying in tongues. He right. says, I wish you all spoke with tongues. Now, we don't, we don't go and pray in tongues in front of the unbeliever. That's right. yeah. We yeah. pray in tongues in hours and hours before we go talk to the unbeliever. That's then when right. we stand before the unbeliever, God reveals everything in their heart. That's right. yeah. And That's we right. tell them that, they know that God is That's real right. because good. the word of knowledge and word of wisdom reveals everything that's, good. that's there. That's, yes. good, yeah. that's, good. that's good. That's good stuff. Now, there's, there's tongues as a sign for the unbeliever where somebody's Japanese and you're you know, um, German, and all of a sudden you preach the gospel into them in their language. But that's that's a gifting like prophecy that you can't turn on and off anytime you that's, want. That's right. It's when the Spirit in, empowers you to do that. Right. But you can read the Word anytime you want. Come on, you now. can pray in tongues for personal edification anytime you Come want. On, you can read your Bible, you can worship, you can evangelize anytime you want. That's and right. that's what we need to be doing. But, but, um, you know, I, I'm just saying this because I have had more resistance in the time that we set up this ministry to the one simple thing of having people spend some time praying in tongues than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. People will soul win with me, other denominations, other people, but people will fight me on that. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, that's because the devil doesn't want you to be in truth. Do you think a liar, what is dangerous to a liar? Truth. truth. That's correct. And if the spirit of truth well, how do you, let me ask you this question. Come on, how, do you know, how do you think the Come Apostle on. Paul Come on, that wrote three quarters of the New Testament got all that knowledge? Hey, he says, I pray in tongues more than everybody. Hey, you know, that means right. when he was walking from town to town, he was hey, 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 Then he would stop yes. and he would start writing down all the revelation and all the truth that was flowing through his spirit. And when people asked him a question, he automatically had the answer because he was operating in what we call the revelation <laughs> that's, right. that's good, that's good. And it opens the door to another world. It, calls, right. it opens the door. He empowers. The Bible says that God puts treasures in earthen vessels. He's put yes. treasures. Yes. And every one of you tonight, yes. how do you activate that? I pray in other tongues. Yes. I've had guys come out of witchcraft with all kinds of crazy witchcraft tattoos. I'd be like, hey, you know what? Get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Okay, just go and pray. And they'd be praying in the Spirit. And we wouldn't have to lay hands on them to get delivered. They'd be praying in tongues. They'd be puking in their closet as they're getting delivered. Yeah, it's the Holy Ghost. Uh, and they're just cleaning them out. Yes, that's good. So I guess what I'm trying to you know, bring home to you guys tonight is that doing it. I need all the help that I can get. That's right, you're doing it. I'm not really any match for the devil in my own knowledge, in right. my own strength, only being on this earth 48 years, and he's been around for centuries and seeing millennials 
of Global civilization Global. rises and fall. He was so slick and such a good liar. He, he, he talked a quarter of the angels or a third of the angels into walking. Come on, man. man. Yes, you Come think on, you man. ask just, you want to see a Picasso of Satan's work? Just ask yourself why you don't spend a lot of time praying in other tongues. Yeah, then is. you'll see a masterpiece of the devil's work in your life. But if you're in the Holy Ghost, the devil's no match for you. Woo! Right. That's right. That's good. Hallelujah. Yep. I'm not scared Amen. of the devil, but I've learned in my life to have a healthy respect for how good of a liar he is. Mm, come on now. And how slick he is yes. at getting people to compromise. Oh, yes. That's right. And become lukewarm. Yes. The Bible says in the end times, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure, lovers of money, lovers of all these things. I don't have the resistance to fight that outside of the power of the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. So I'm urging you tonight. I'm imploring you tonight. Yes. I'm, um, I'm, I'm asking you with everything in my soul. That's right. That's right. The only way that you're going to fulfill the supernatural things that God has for your life, and the only way that you're going to walk in light and resist the darkness and break off all the crap, it's not in your own strength. It's going to be in the mighty Holy Ghost. That Sister Elp is talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, how do you activate that? And people say, well, hey, listen, man. They go, well, I just, I just pray in my mind. I said, that's fine. I don't believe in praying in your mind other than the fact if you got your tongue cut out and you weren't able to confess, but I'm just kind of joking. But right. No, but the, the point of it is, is that, look, there's a time to be still and know that he's God. Yes. But every person that I've seen free is a person that you'll teach them the word of God and they'll speak the word of God out in their life because faith has a voice. Yes. And a person that you can get to verbalize, praying in English and in tongues. Yes. You get these rigid religious people out of these different denominations yes. that just kneel down and are silent and hum, forget yes. that business. You get in here yes. and you get into the Holy Spirit yes. and you release the Holy Spirit, activate yes. the Holy Spirit by praying in the Spirit. And listen, if you're a lazy guy and you need to go get a job, the first thing the Holy Spirit's going to say is, you're lazy, you need to go get a job. Yes. Yes. So you get into tongues and wherever you're out of whack, the Holy Ghost is going to, yes. we as men, I run a men's home, we as men don't like to be told no. Yep. That's right. But let me tell you this, unless you can hear God's no answer, you're never going to hear his yes. That's right. Come yes, on. sir. Yes, sir. Yes. That's good work. That's good. Sometimes, That's you know what, your, your parents told you no and you didn't listen, the police told you no, maybe a wife, uh -oh. maybe, you know, a pastor, Ouch. Maybe, you know, the Holy Ghost, no, say, no, no, it's not such a good idea. No. I mean, when the Holy Ghost says to me, I'm not going to tell you again. I know it's time. Like, hey, but I better do this now. Because <laughs> I've learned my experience. God loves you. He cares for you. Yeah, that's right. It's better to get stung by a bee than hit, get hit with a back truck. You know. No. <laughs> so, so you know, coming back to this, Pretty it's a simple bad. gospel that saved me and set me free. Romans eight thirteen was the foundation of what we were talking about. Because guys had tried all the 12 steps, the 13 steps, the this, the that, and the other. But when you try it with Jesus, Come on now. and, you, and you, just, you just spend time with him, yeah. he cleans you out. He, yeah. he changes you. He gives you the power to break off stuff that you could never break off yourself. And so I just want to encourage you tonight, don't give up. Yes. If you're weak, if you got breath in your lungs, there's heavy hope. Don't give up. Don't focus so much on your weaknesses and your bondages. Get your eyes on Jesus. Yes. Don't focus so much on all these things that you're doing wrong. Just yes. get into prayer. Yes. Yes. Get yes. into yes. His Word. Yes. Yes. Get your eyes on Jesus. Yes. Because the devil wants you to focus on your weakness. And the devil yes. you know, wants to look, you to look at your failures and your past. Yes. But if you can just focus on the Lord and let Him do it. Yes. What happens is you're sitting here praying in tongues. I've had guys come in there. They don't want anything to do with God. All they wanted is their wife to think they were going through some kind of program so they could remain the same selfish person they always were and get back with her, you know? But then in this process of them coming and praying, all of a sudden, they're feeling miserable. They're like, hey, man, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm cleaning this over here and praying. I'm, I'm feeling miserable than I ever have. I'm good. That's my good. Keep on going. Like, what do you mean? I'm like, what's happening is God's get bringing to you to a place in your yeah. life where you're starting to hate the junk in your life as much yeah. as he does. Yeah. And you're really close. 
yeah. to a breakthrough. You're going through an impasse. Yeah. You're at a place where you're about ready to come into freedom. And yeah. those things that have always had you bound are going to break. Yeah. But whatever you do, don't get out of prayer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they stay in there. And I need to tell you, they get free. And the guy that was coming in from prison, now what do you want prayer for, brother? Well, I'd like an, uh, I'd like an Impala, you know, a 69 Impala decked out. Uh -huh. And why do you want that, sir? So I can pick up the ladies on 82nd. Okay, next prayer request. We're not going with that one right now. But all of a sudden, he sits down and prays in tongues for six or seven months. And he's like, man, I'm not right. You know what? I, I want more Jesus. All of a sudden, the things on the inside are changing. Yeah. He's wanted money in his bank account. He's wanted things easy. He was going for God just so all these things could work out. Right. And God changes him to where he wakes up to serve him, and it's not about him. Yes. There's an eternal, ultimate eternal change that happens yes. through the mighty Holy Ghost. And pretty soon, this person who was wanting an Impala is being changed into the image of Christ, and he's out there doing the work. Yes. And so if you're, if you're here tonight, Thank and, you, uh, you say, you know, I, I, don't, I don't pray in the Spirit, but I want to. You know, I really want to. You know, I want this. I want this. Uh, I've been in kind of the religion for some years. And come on now. I want, I want the real thing. I, yes. I want yes, sir. Yes. Then, yes, sir. You know, you come to the altar tonight. And uh, even if you don't come to the altar tonight, um, you can go home and lift your hands. Because I'm not laying hands on you to give it. I lay hands on you. God will give it to you. But it's Jesus doing it. It's the Father imparting it. Yeah. If I laid hands on you, it's from me. You'd be more messed up. You'd be, you'd be, you'd be deliverance when you when you went. But, but Jesus is the one that does it. Yeah. He says that you know what? He says if you come to your earthly father and you ask him for a piece of bread, he's not going to give you a stone. How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost? That's Amen. A That's a guarantee. Yes. And it says in Acts two thirty eight. It says. For all who believe, unto you and your children, for all who are far off, everyone. Yes, yes. That's all. And look at Acts 1 8. It says, And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. To do what? To show off? No. To be a witness. Yes. What is that witness? It's the witness of Christ. It's his love. It's who he is. Yes. It's God's presence flowing through you. It's his character. Yes. You're going to receive power to be a witness. Because when people look at you, they're not going to see the old person that was always there. They're going to see a change. Amen. They're going to say, only God could have done this. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, hallelujah. 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 Is there anybody else that's uh, needing to share, Pastor Corey, or anything? We're going to go ahead. We're not wanting to burn you out. Even though we went a little long, it was good. Um, it was God ordained, and I'm glad you came. Yeah. You know? The Spirit's willing, the flesh is weak. It's midweek. You guys got to get up for work. But you know what? God did something. Yeah, yeah, As I'm yeah. sitting here talking, I'm just seeing hearts that have been, God's been turning keys and things. Yeah, yeah. With the different ministers that have been talking tonight, God's yeah. been yeah. doing work in us. Amen. So Amen. I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful for yes. it. Amen. Amen. So you're here tonight and you say, I don't speak in tongues, but I want to. Meet me at this altar. Or you're here tonight and you say, I speak in tongues, but I've only got two syllables, three syllables. I want more. I yes. want an expansion yes. of this flow, of this river, of this Yes, sir. Yes. Then come on down. Amen. Come on down. Good Amen. Hallelujah. If you're here yes. and you need a prayer for any kind of like sickness and disease or any kind of um, financial need, God's here. So uh, we're open. We're open. We have the altar open tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. I wanted to Jermaine to share a little bit, but uh, it's pretty late and stuff, but uh, Jermaine's a blessing. Uh, we've known each other for years, and Amen. he's he's a, a strong man of God, and we're thankful. Right. He's always on missions going all over. Amen. So when he stops in and he asks for a bed, I'm like, oh, cool, Jermaine's here for a few days. Just passing through. I, I, I didn't see him. Maybe he can share tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, maybe you can share tomorrow. I didn't, so I didn't see yeah, him, but yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Went right, we went right to the Man. All right, well, praise God. Come on, come on. Is there more? Is there anybody? All right, praise the Lord. You guys should just be praying in the Spirit right now. Just in the Spirit of prayer. Mike is face me. We're going to pray. Hallelujah, Jesus.